Hi everybody. Uh, hope you are um, hope you are well and uh, staying safe during these challenging times. I'm Alex Thompson, Regional Coordinator, Africa, the Americas, and Europe. And thank you so much for joining our uh, webinar today for international students on everything you need to know about RMIT. So during this session, we're going to go uh, over um, a general overview of the university, our study options that we offer, our support services for international students, entry requirements, um, and how you can apply to RMIT. Uh, next slide. Um, and just first things first, um, just uh, if you have any questions, my colleagues will be um, answering them during the presentation. So if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in uh, the chat and uh, they, they will answer them during the session. Um, first things first though, um, an acknowledgement of country which is a, a special tradition in Australia as well as RMIT. So RMIT University acknowledges the people of the Woi Wurrung and Boon Wurrung language groups of the Eastern Kulin Nations on whose unceded lands we conduct the business of the university. RMIT University respectfully acknowledges their ancestors and elders past and present RMIT also acknowledges the traditional custodians and their ancestors of the lands and waters across Australia where we conduct our business. Next slide. So a, a few, few uh, general facts about RMIT. We were founded in 1887 and we're Australia's largest tertiary institution with approximately 90,000 students um, uh, studying not only in Melbourne but across our Camps, other campuses in Vietnam, and also our um, programs which we teach in uh, in offshore teaching arrangements in 12 countries. So, and we're also uh, strongly connected worldwide. We have over 450,000 alumni, and also over 200 university partners around the world. We are in the top one percent of the universities globally, and we're ranked 22nd in the world out of all the university out of all universities under 15 years old um, through the QS ranking system. Uh, we're also fourth in Australia for our partnerships with employers and fifth in graduate employment uh, in, in Australia. So we have a very strong track record with, uh, get, with um, getting our graduates into, into the workforce. Also, we have a strong track record with uh, giving our students practical, uh, practical experience during our programs. Um, we've had 11,689 student work integrated learning placements with uh, 3,749 um, of our industry partners in 2019. We're also a university that's very committed to sustainability. Uh, we were the winner of the Green Gown Award and we've been the only university um, to have won twice in Australasia. And we also have an excellence in innovation with us, with us being the winner of the 2018 Victorian International Education Awards. Where RMIT is a dual sector university, meaning that we teach uh, everything from English for academic purposes to foundation studies, vocational education programs, so diploma, advanced diploma and associate degree, as well as higher education programs, so bachelor, masters by coursework, masters by research and PhD. We offer a broad range of disciplines and we teach everything from architecture, biomedical sciences, business, design, engineering, fashion, game design, health science, IT, media, property, science, social science, to name a few. And I'm going to be talking a little bit more about those disciplines um, in, in uh, the future slides. Uh, RMIT has uh, three campuses in Melbourne, as well as two campuses in Vietnam. But today, I'd like to focus on the three campuses that are based in Melbourne, beginning with our um, city campus. So Melbourne City Campus is home to the majority of RMIT's courses and it's situated in the heart of Melbourne Central Business uh, District. It has innovative brand new facilities and study spaces um, such as the Swanson Academic Building which is in this slide here as well as uh, other facilities such as our Design Hub um, as well as our new Academic Street which has uh, lots of chill out zones, cafes, retail pop-ups, study portals, rooftop terraces and garden spaces. And our uh, campus is easily accessible by public transport from every corner of uh, the city of Melbourne, uh, being accessible by train, tram and uh, bus. Uh, this slide here is just to give you an idea of uh, what the campus looks like from an aerial view and uh, a, 
as you can see, it covers quite a large large area of the city centre um, and it does cover about 7% of the city uh, central business district's buildings. Uh, Bandura campus is uh, located 18 kilometres from the city centre and it's uh, being out on the metropolitan fringe, it's surrounded by parkland, lakes and wildlife. Uh, it's home to uh, our health, medical science and teaching programs, as well as um, we teach uh, some of our um, engineering courses uh, and education courses out there as well. It has lots of sporting facilities for football, soccer and athletics, tennis, netball um, and, other, and other sports. Um, it's got lots of different uh, research uh, facilities and teaching clinics on there, um, mainly around engineering and health science. And uh, also uh, Bandura campus has on-campus accommodation. Um, so which uh, for students who study their programs out there, they're able to take advantage of that. Uh, this slide here is just to give you a bit of an idea of uh, the area that our Bandura's campus covers from, from an aerial perspective. Uh, Brunswick campus, our smallest campus is located five kilometres from the Central Business District of Melbourne and it's very also very easily accessible by public transport. Uh, it's home to our home, uh, it's home to our um, fashion and textiles, graphic design and primary teaching disciplines. It's a small modern campus uh, located in the multicultural and vibrant uh, na uh, neighbourhood of uh, Brunswick um, and it's located to a big, uh, a big uh, road um, known as Sydney Road. Uh, it has also lots of different creative studios um, as which, uh, in which students can showcase their work um, to their peers as well as the public as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the different study areas now, um, beginning with architecture. So um, the different study areas um, that are covered under architecture are architecture itself, interior design and landscape architecture. Uh, our School of Architecture is ranked 22nd in the world um, through very, uh, in the QS ranking systems and is also ranked uh, third in Australia for architecture. It's, uh, it's RMIT's, uh, it, it also has an excellence in research where RMIT's research and architecture is rated above world standard. Uh, not only we've also received also other accolades such as the Victorian Architecture Model um, Medal uh, every year from 2012 to 2019. And as part of um, an architecture program, you do have the opportunity to study in uh, study overseas um, through our Global Experience Experiences Program, where you can study in places such as Los Angeles. Um, with our exchange part of the Southern California Institute of Architecture. For design, you're able to study um, different areas such as animation and interactive media, game design, graphic and communication design, and industrial product and furniture design. Uh, we are the official design partner for the National Gallery of Victoria, as well as the Australian Centre for the Moving Image. Um, we are strongly, uh, strongly ranked, um, being the first in Australia for art and design, uh, and 12th in the world, uh, 12th in the world for art and design, and we're also ranked 10th in the world for anim uh, animation. We offer a broad range of study areas in business, um, covering everything from accounting, um, economics, information systems, management, and leadership marketing, supply chain and logistics and more. We're ranked uh, third in the world uh, for the study of digital currencies and we are also the RMIT, we're also the RMIT Block Innovation Hub of the National Gallery of Victoria and we offer a large range of electives as well which are designed to build your skills, uh, skills for self-employment. For engineering, we cover a, lot, uh, a, a large range of uh, different areas of engineering, um, everything from aerospace um, and aviation, biomedical, chemical, civil, computer, electrical, electronic, engineering management, mechanical and automotive, mechatronics and manufacturing systems. We're ranked in the top 100 universities in the world for civil and structural and electronic engineering. And we do have a range of a large range of pathways um, 
for, um, with advanced diplomas and associate degrees, which provide pathways into engineering bachelor degrees. A great thing about our Bachelor of Engineering is that there is a flexible first year. Um, so if you're not sure on what sort of uh, stream of engineering you'd like to get in, you're able to um, explore very specialisations for electives in your first year, which are pre uh, preparing you to choose an engineering field in, in your second year. We're also globally recognised um, in engineering, uh, being um, part, uh, could you go back around please? Um, as a signatory to the International Engineering Alliance, um, and we're also recognised by the Washington Accord and uh, the Dublin Accord as well. For biomedical science, we cover uh, we cover in the areas around biomedical science, biotechnology, lab lab laboratory medicine, pharmacy, and pharmaceutical sciences. And uh, we are ranked by the Australian Research Council as above world standard in areas such as clinical sciences, pharmacology and pharmaceutical sciences, medical physiology, microbiology. Um, and also another great thing about uh, us and biomedical sciences is that we're the only university in the state of Victoria to offer majors in haematology, anatomical pathology, medical microbiology, clinical biochemistry, chemistry, transfusions, and uh, transplantation science. Our Bachelor of Biomedical Science, Laboratory Medicine, is the only Victorian degree accredited by the Australian Institute of Medical uh, Scientists. And also as part of our biomedical um, science programs, there are lots of opportunities for you to travel overseas and undertake 10 to 13 weeks of professional practice in um, an approved laboratory as well. Health sciences, we offer um, different study areas being complementary medicine, dental studies, medical radiation, nursing, optical dispensing, pharmacy, psychology, and sports sciences. Um, we're ranked as above, uh, well above standard in uh, complementary and alternative medicine, pharmacology and pharmaceutical sciences, medical physiology and physical sciences. Uh, we also are an industry leader in uh, Chinese medicine as well um, in the state of Victoria. We have cutting edge facilities um, where students are able to uh, practice um, on um, cutting edge equipment that's widely used in clinical centres around the world. Uh, also for computer and IT, we offer um, dis uh, study areas in computer science, information systems, information technology and software engineering. RMIT is ranked in the top 100 in computer sciences and information systems and we um, are, we are um, a university with excellence in research in the areas of artificial intelligence and well process processing, um, which are ranked above world standard by the Australian Research Council. We do have uh, flexible majors when they are Bachelor of Information Technology, where you can uh, study uh, specialisations, allowing you to um, uh, allow you to meet your different aspirations in these areas. Uh, we also offer the in communications study areas such as advertising, creative writing, journalism, professional communication, public relations, publishing and screenwriting. We are one of the top universities in communication and media studies. We're ranked 37th in the world and uh, we are first in Australia uh, in the field of advertising um, and we're fourth in Australia for communication and media studies. We're also a UNESCO, uh, we're also uh, an ex a university with excellence in research in communication and media studies, which is, a bank, uh, which is rated as above world standard. At RMIT, we place a strong emphasis uh, on getting, uh, getting our students out in, uh, with, the right, with the skills that employers want um, when the students enter the workforce. So this, uh, the different skills that employers are looking up, uh, are looking for in uh, the current um, in the current uh, situation of the workforce is problem solving, teamwork, communication, adaptability, and interpersonal skills. So how does RMIT provide uh, these skills to uh, our current students and our graduates? 
So one of the one of the big initiatives that we do is uh, working in graded learning, where students are able to gain work experience whilst they're studying, whether that's integrated in their program or alongside it. Uh, so such um, such different ways students can gain work experience as part of their program are uh, practical placements, um, especially in, uh, for example, uh, nursing, psycho uh, psychology, or uh, our education programs. Um, students are placed out into, say, medical, medical institutions, um, educational institutions um, as part of their program. Uh, also professional practices. Um, students also work on uh, projects with our industry partners, um, as well as uh, that we do offer as well internships within our programs, and they can be paid or unpaid depending on the arrangement with our industry partner. Alongside this, we do have an, a range of services and resources to help our students connect with industry. Um, such such uh, services and resources that we offer are um, RMIT On Demand, which is a freelance marketplace connecting uh, businesses to our current students and recent graduates for project-based and temporary paid work opportunities. Also, RMIT Career Hub, which is a portal where students can apply for jobs internships and graduate positions uh, and students are also able to register for events, seminars, workshops as well as book appointments uh, with career counsellors. Also the RMIT job shop where students can speak with support staff that can provide advice on how they can better, um, better their uh, prospects for looking at employment within their chosen career path as well as uh, how they can um, improve their internet skills, uh, uh, interview skills, as well as improve uh, their resume. Also the RMIT Future Edge program, which is a co-curricular pro program designed to increase uh, our students' employability within their chosen, uh, chosen industry through developing practical skills valued by employers. We also offer um, RMIT uh, initiatives known as RMIT Creds, which is uh, digital cr credentials which improve employability, career outcomes, and life skills. Such different areas that students can um, enrol in these credentials are adaptability, cultural intelligence, communication, um, being some examples, and we do offer many more. We do place a strong, also place a strong emphasis on giving our students a global experience, um, and students are able to do that uh, through different ways, such as uh, studying abroad for a semester, enrolling in a short-term study, study tour, working or volunteering overseas, um, or trying a new culture um, on student exchange as well. Um, we have over 200 pu uh, arrangement pu uh, student exchange arrangement, arrangements uh, with partner institutions in 49 countries. And we also have uh, many different industry and research partnerships on uh, on every continent as well. The next few slides are providing a bit more on uh, on life as a student at RMIT. Uh, but to begin with that, we um, we should be talking about why should an international student study in Melbourne? Well, this student uh, Melbourne is a very vibrant and welcoming and multicultural city. Um, we have people from well over 100 nationalities living, living in the city um, and it's not only being uh, vibrant and multicultural, um, it's uh, also the sixth best uh, city in the world for ferning and dining. So if you love your food and coffee, you will feel very home in Melbourne. It's also the sporting capital of Australia. So if you love your sport, there's many high profile international sporting events that are held in the city, such as the Australian Open Tennis, um, the Formula One Grand Prix, as well as the Rip Curl Pro uh, World Tour Surfing event as well, which are very affordable for international students to attend. Our, uh, Melbourne has also received a number of uh, glo uh, high global rankings, such as uh, being the second most livable city in the world, as well as the third best student city in the world. Also, if you love your music, uh, Melbourne has more live musical venue, uh, live music venues per capita than any other city in the world. This slide here is just to give you a bit of an idea of the cost of living per week um, uh, when, uh, when you're living in Melbourne. So we've broken it down here into uh, 
into six different areas. So uh, one being rent, which is a very important um, expense. So uh, here in the slide, we've broken it down in relation to where our campuses are situated um, in Melbourne. So for students who are living near our city campus, rent rough is roughly between 200 to 300 Australian dollars per week. Um, for students who um, are, uh, are living near our Brunswick campus, um, approximately between 150 to 250 Australian dollars. And for students who are studying near our Bundura camp, uh, living near our Bundura campus, you, you would approximately be paying um, between 120 to 200 Australian dollars. Uh, for food, um, it, that would range between uh, 80 to 150 Australian dollars per week. And public transport, depending where you are living in the city, um, up to fifty dollars as well. Um, a good thing about a good thing is if you're living in the city centre of Melbourne, there is a uh, a free tram zone um, which you can take advantage of. Uh, electricity and gas and water, um, depending on uh, your accommodation arrangements, it could range between ten to twenty five um, Australian dollars per week. Phone and internet, um, between fifteen to thirty Australian dollars, and depending on how much uh, you like going out and um, uh, depending on how much you, you enjoy going out and getting getting amongst all the activities that Melbourne has to offer, uh, between 30 to 100 Australian dollars per week. RMIT University is committed in, ev in, every, in helping everybody in the community shape their best future. Um, we do prioritise the safety and wellbeing of our students and staff. Um, we have delegated security teams for each campus with a 24 hour campus patrol to ensure that all learning environments are safe and supported at all times. We also uh, place a strong emphasis on uh, the student experience um, and with that we rank, uh, we rank uh, the first in the state of Victoria um, out of all the universities in Victoria for um, student engagement. Alongside uh, during, uh, with um, with that, we do, there's lots of social and fun activities to do at RMIT University. Um, so some of the ways you can get involved in uh, these activities is by uh, joining sports and fitness or creative clubs. We have over 160 different clubs um, in which you can take part in, as well as um, also with our um, student union, um, also organising many trips and tours which you can take advantage of across the year where you're able to go and visit popular um, popular regional areas in the state of Victoria, such as uh, the Great Ocean Road, uh, Phillip Island, um, the Yarra Valley, as well as Wilson's Promontory as well. We also have uh, a, mates, a program called Mates at RMIT, um, in which comm commencing international students can buddy up with uh, uh, with already um, commenced students, so they so they're making friends um, at the university as soon as they arrive. Melbourne is a fantastic city, but before you make your big move, you'll need to do some research. And uh, the best starting point to learn about all the different accommodation options that are that are available to international students is uh, um, is available on the RMIT website. Um, some of the different options, uh, you different accommodation options that you're able to take um, advantage of um, are purpose-built student accommodation providers in which RMIT has uh, a number of arrangements with, as well as we also provide um, advice on how you could seek uh, private rentals, as well as um, how you could access short-term hostels as well. We also have a, a, a large range of support services for international students to ensure that they feel at home uh, while they're studying in Melbourne, as well as to help them thrive uh, during their studies at RMIT. A few that I'd like to um, touch upon uh, are, are that we have support staff um, who can provide um, uh, support, uh, who can provide advice on uh, how you can go about finding housing accommodation when you arrive in Melbourne. Uh, also, we do have counselling services, so for students who may need to talk to somebody, um, we do have uh, on-site student counselling in which our current students can see uh, free of charge. Um, during the current situation, um, with students learning online, um, as 
due to the current situation with COVID-19. Students have also been able to access the counselling services online by booking an appointment um, on, our, on our website. We also do have finance, uh, stu uh, support staff who can provide advice around financial, financial support and budgeting, as well as uh, we do have support staff for students with disability and long-term illnesses. Uh, for students who um, have entrepreneur, entrepreneurial minds, we do have a facility known as the RMIT Activator, um, in which students can develop entrepreneurial skills as well as uh, develop bright ideas on startup companies and which um, the Activator also provides um, funding as well for students who have um, bright ideas around um, creating startup companies. Uh, we do also have uh, on-site health services and clinics and stu students are able to access these services um, at a su subsidised rate. During the current situation, we're also providing extra support um, to our international um, students. Um, we're, offering, um, it, we're offering support uh, initiatives such as digital peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, uh, as well as um, personal academic support um, through a platform known as Student Studiosity. We're also offering concert, concierge services to help um, students with onboarding as well as technology troubleshooting, as well as um, providing extra access to job support and career advice. RMIT also offers a, a large, uh, quite a range of international scholarships um, as well. Um, so some examples that we do, um, do offer are the International Excellence Scholarships for certain regions, so which can provide up to a, a total value of 20% tuition fee reductions for the program duration of either a bachelor or a master's by coursework program. We do offer the science, engineering and health merit scholarships. We provide a total value of uh, up to 10,000 Australian dollars for science, engineering and health programs. Um, and we also offer the future leaders scholarships uh, which is a total value of 20% uh, tuition fee reduction for the program duration outlined in your offer letter, um, which are the certain regions. RMIT uh, provides a number of different uh, pathway options. Um, so uh, one, of, one of the examples is uh, foundation studies, which uh, can provide um, direct entry to one or three different pathways pathways which can provide a pathway into a degree, an associate degree or a diploma. Uh, so for successful entry into a uh, foundation program, uh, you would need to complete an Australian Year 11, uh, equivalent of Australian Year 11 with, a, with an equivalent DE average uh, with an IELTS academic um, band of minimum IELTS academic band of 5.5 uh, with no band below 5.0. There are three different streams and I'll go into a little bit more detail shortly about the Foundation Studies Program, um, but you can study up to four different streams, which are an art design and architecture, a business, a general stream and a science engineering health stream, which can get you into uh, the degree of the uh, undergraduate um, or um, diploma um, degree of your choice. So how can a student apply to RMIT University? Um, well, we in this slide here, we've broken it down into three steps for you. So the first one is to begin research. So finding the course you want to study at RMIT. Um, we do offer, we do um, showcase all our um, programs on our RMIT website in which you can check the entry requirements um, as well as the pathway options um, if you don't meet those entry requirements. You're also able to build a brochure for all your different uh, your uh, for all your different programs of uh, your own choice through our brochure builder, in which you can access on the RMIT site. Step two is to prepare. Um, so preparing your application, in which you'll need to complete a set of supporting documents and certified copies. Um, generally, we ask um, as part of the application process academic transcripts. Um, as well as any documents relating to selection tasks if applicable. So generally, um, if a, a selection task is requested, 
These are for programs such as architecture, um, communication, art, um, and fashion, um, in which stu students have to um, demonstrate their creative skills um, in the selection task. We do also off, uh, request uh, your graduation certificates, as well as copy of your password and proof of English language proficiency. And then the third step on outcome up, uh, is submitting your application to RMIT. Um, generally, um, please allow up to a minimum of 10 days for RMIT to assess your application, um, provided that you provide um, all the necessary documents. Um, if, uh, if we need extra information from you, our admissions uh, team will be, be in contact. Um, and if you're successful in receiving an offer, um, you're, you're um, notified uh, by email as well. So how can you find the entry uh, course requirements on the RMIT website? Um, so you're able to view these um, by looking up the different programs of, uh, that you wish to, wish to take a look at on the RMIT website. There's also, uh, and you're able to view these by clicking uh, the admissions tab um, just to just to ensure that you're looking at the right ones is to click the international button, which is located um, under quick facts on the program overview header. You're also able to um, find the different options, uh, different pathway options as well by clicking the pathways tab in the header. Uh, you're also also in the slide here. Um, there's different links in which you can also uh, look at the different um, uh, country equivalency of the, the different qualifications um, in your country um, to, to, um, so that you can see if you, if you meet the minimum requirements and not of the program. This slide here is just to give you a bit of, a, a bit of an idea of what the minimum uh, English language proficiency requirements are for undergraduate programs. Um, so and uh, the different English proficiency tests that we uh, that we accept. So we do offer the IELTS uh, and the TOEFL IBT and the Pearson's uh, Academic Test of English. So for IELTS, um, on, for undergraduate programs, the minimum requirement is 6.5 with no ban less than 6.0. Uh, for the TOEFL IBT, the minimum overall score of 79 with a minimum 13 in reading, 12 in listening, 18 in speaking and 21 in writing. For the Pearson's academic test of English, um, a minimum score of 58 is required with no communication ban left than 50. Um, a good, uh, just important thing, um, some uh, disciplines such as uh, nursing, psychology and education have higher English language requirements. So I would encourage you if you're interested in any of those, if you're interested in programs of any of those disciplines to check um, on the RMIT website what the higher English language requirements are. Just touching a little bit more on pathway options for students who may not meet the academic requirements, RMIT training offers uh, Eng uh, English for academic purposes as well as a foundation uh, studies program uh, to get students where they need to go. So for students who may need to um, do, who may not have met the English requirements and may need to do some English prior to um, their university program, we do offer an English for academic purposes program, which on um, successful completion allows students to direct entry to RMIT without having to sit a further English language test. So, Generally, um, this, the program is structured um, with uh, five different uh, five different modules in which we teach uh, elementary up to advanced plus level. Um, each level takes ten weeks full time study to complete, um, in which there are two five week modules. Um, generally, students are studying um, twenty hours of classroom study per week, um, two hundred hours per level, and Alongside of not only uh, learning in the classroom, there's additional independent learning activities. And not only are our students um, learning English, uh, academic English, they're also learning uh, additional skills um, such as critical thinking, independent learning, and uh, working in groups in, in an English context. Um, as part of our classrooms, um, 
we do have a maximum of 18 students per class. So small class sizes, meaning that you get extra time with your teachers. Um, a great thing about our English for Academic Purposes program, we do have lots of different intakes, um, which happen every five weeks. The students who made it to do, um, who didn't meet the entry requirements to an undergraduate program, um, we do offer the Foundation Studies program, which I talked a little bit about earlier, but I'm going to delve a little bit more into how, how it's all structured. So as I mentioned um, earlier, that the Foundation Studies program um, has tailored streams for students to, to choose from to get to uh, the pro their Bachelor program of choice. So for students who are interested in the art design and architecture programs, you're able to do the art and design and architecture stream, as well as students for wanting to get into business programs, there is the business stream. And for students who are interested in science, engineering and health, we do have the specific science, engineering and health stream. So as uh, the program runs for one year full time in which students uh, take um, eight subjects, um, eight subjects uh, over, over the um, course of the year. Um, and as part of that full time year, um, they're doing approximately about 21 hours per week. So um, with our, found, uh, not our Foundations uh, Studies program, we offer high quality teaching and learning where our educators are experienced, helpful and a passion, are passionate about our students' learning journey. Um, there's they're always there to help and they welcome students uh, to Melbourne um, and they're able to give lots of different support around the program, providing advice, um, as well as offering free mentoring programs to help students adjust to their life in Melbourne and, at RMI, and, and studying at RMIT. Alongside of the Foundation so Studies program, RMIT training offers a range of activities for the Foundation Studies students in which they can make new friends and explore Melbourne. Um, ensuring that students have fun while they're studying and being part of uh, our, our student community at RMIT. Oh, our Foundation Studies program also has uh, specialist facilities as well that allow for small group activities and they place um, our students at the centre of their learning as well. During the current situation with COVID has meant RMIT has had to adapt so that they can, so uh, that it can continue teaching our current students while while our campus is closed and we have been since semester one uh, 2020 we have been uh, teaching all our programs uh, on online um, meaning that students are able to attend our cl uh, their classes easily from wherever they are have more control over the time that this, uh, that they spend studying remaining informed and accessing RMIT's global knowledge and connecting with other students and forming a val valuable networks wherever they are in the world. So how have we been doing that? Uh, how have we been teaching our students online? Well, we've been, te we've been uh, teaching our programs through an online platform known as Canvas, in which uh, student, um, students uh, can um, not only learn and inter interact um, and as well as gain supplementary uh, resources in which they need to complete their study. So through Canvas, students are able to attend the classes uh, and lectures at the regular, at the regular, regular scheduled class time. Uh, all our lectures are net, uh, recorded for students to access again, access again at any time. So if students miss a, a, a live uh, a live recording of a lecture they're able to go back and uh, and view that recording at a later date our last students are able to interact along uh, online with their peers and their teachers during class um, and they do that also through through methods such as microsoft teams and that as well um, also students can continue engaging with each other through tools such as discussion boards and they're able to showcase um, their their work as well um, through tutorials and uh, and the discussion boards as well. So that that concludes uh, the presentation. So um, I uh, thank you so much again for tuning into the webinar on uh, for, for international students. I hope you found it a valuable session. 
Um, if you have any questions, we are more than happy to um, uh, answer your questions either in the Q and A um, in the Q and A box, um, as well as I'm able to answer any any of the important questions as well uh, live on the chat. So thanks once again for tuning in, and uh, we're we're happy to answer your questions now.